My good people, there are several announcements in the bulletin that I urge you to read for yourselves and to note the times and everything. I do want to mention that tomorrow is a feast of the anniversary of the apparitions of Fatima. And I urge all of us to work to fulfill her requests of prayer, penance, and mortification. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My good people, too many of us, I'm afraid, are more concerned or overly concerned about God as being a God of justice, which he is. But we tend to see only the justice part, and we even misconstrue that particular word in that application. We forget that true justice is always tinged with mercy. They go together, especially concerning God. Yes, he is a God of justice, but he is also a God of mercy. Too many people picture God up there sitting or standing or floating or whatever he's doing with his thumb like this, this waiting for someone to slip, I gotcha, and he crushes us. No. If that was God, if that was his mentality, his thinking, would he have sent his only son to suffer as he did and to die as he did for us? No. It was God's justice that drove us out of the Garden of Eden. But it was his mercy that sent his son to reopen the gates to the paradise, the everlasting paradise. Contrary to popular belief, God did not put us on this earth to suffer. He put us on this earth to be happy. And if we had remained in the Garden of Eden, we would have been perpetually happy with no suffering. But because we chose, we, through our first parents, and even now, we, through our own failings and faults, we choose to turn away from God to something that we think, at least temporarily, is more attractive. We cause our own suffering. Because we think that God put us here to suffer, it follows that we think he doesn't want us to be happy. And so we're afraid to love the things that he has given us. We're afraid to love his other creatures. We're afraid to enjoy anything sometimes. We're tiptoeing around, waiting for God's hand to crutch us, clutch us, to grab us and crush us. Even the most severe saints I don't care who you can think of. They took time out to enjoy from time to time God's creation and to love God's creation. They would even see God in a bowl of ice cream, a flower, a twig on a tree. 
our fellow human beings. After all, all this was created by the artist of all artists. If he had meant for us to live only in suffering and not to enjoy any of this other of his creations, then why did he bother creating it? Why didn't he just put us in a desert? God can't help. Love can't help. Wanting to share its happiness, his happiness, its beauty, his beauty. Love and God cannot help but want others to enjoy, to be happy, to be joyful. It's perfectly okay for us to look at God's creation, whatever it is, and to love it, and to say we love it, provided that we don't love it to the point of exclusion of the Creator. That's where the problem comes in. That's when you hear sometimes from different pulpits, you're not supposed to love this or that or the other thing. You're not supposed to love things and creations and so forth. You're only supposed to love God. They're simply taking it for granted that we understand to take it in context that we're not supposed to love things to the exclusion of God. But it's perfectly okay to find beauty in the things around us and to enjoy it, to walk out in the rose garden and smell the pretty roses and enjoy it. But thank God for that. It's his gift to you. So give the gift back to him by enjoying it and thanking him for it. Always remembering that all these things, even the man-made things of beauty and art, they all originate in the mind of God. As long as we refer all things to God, and as long as we love God first and foremost, we can do what St. Augustine says. Love God, and you can do anything you want. Because true love won't let us do anything that will offend the beloved. So my good people, we can't get away from suffering. But let us not look only for suffering. Let us accept the suffering as a necessary evil and offer that also to God as a gift. But then let us look beyond the suffering and find the beauty that is behind the suffering, that is even in the suffering. And let's thank God for everything he has given us. And if we were to start right now and not waste a second and listen to things he has given us, we had never come to the end of the list. May God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.